Okay, so for draping the bodice front, first you want to pin the fabric at the apex. You have your apex marking on your muslin. You put the pin through the apex and then put it through the apex on your dress form. Now you want to pin down center front. Match your side seam marking with the side seam on your dress form. Making sure that the line is right underneath your style tape. So your line that's drawn on your muslin should stop right at the bottom of your style tape. Pin the bust line on your muslin to the bottom of your style tape, alternating pins going down and pins going up until you get to the apex. Now on your guideline, which is the second line drawn from your center front, you want to make sure that it's at a 90 degree angle or a right angle uh, from your bust line. And then you want to pin it at the waist, at the bottom of the style tape. And you want to take a small pinch of fabric, which I'm about to show here, so that you have some ease around the waist. So a small pinch in total should be about one eighth of an inch.
Now pin your guide line down onto the dress form so that it's secure. Now turn your dress form to the side and pin underneath the armhole and your armhole will be where your arm plate meets your side seam. Next, you want to clip into your guideline, but don't clip past your waist. So you should be stopping maybe about a quarter inch before you get to the bottom of your waist tape. Smooth the muslin between your center front and the princess line, and then put a pin right in the princess line at the bottom of your waist tape. From your balance line, you want to move the excess fabric over towards center front and then put another pin at the princess line. You want to make sure that the fabric is smooth around the waist. Now you want to smooth the fabric around the neckline and as you can see it's not laying flat so you just want to take your nail and make an indentation where the neckline is so that when you clip into the fabric you know where to stop. At this point, you can cut off all of the excess fabric, leaving about an inch from the neckline. Smooth the fabric from the neckline to the princess line and then create a dart with the excess fabric that you have. Making sure that the excess is going over towards center front. As you can see here, I put pins in order for me to fill the princess line. If you're having issues filling your princess line, just put pins down your princess line. All right, and just folding it over, making sure that the crease is at the princess line and that the dart would be going towards the apex. Now you can pin the shoulder down.
Use dashes or dots to mark your waistline. You're marking from center front to the princess line. At the princess line, you want to create a cross mark to show where the dart leg starts. On the other side of the dart leg, you want to do the same, make a cross mark, and then continue with dots or dashes until you get to your side seam. Be sure to pin your side seam where it connects to your waist tape. Mark your center front with a dash at the neckline and then continue around the neck with either dashes or dots. Mark the intersection between the neckline and the shoulder line. Also mark the shoulder line connection to the armhole. And you wanna take this around the ridge of your armhole Stopping right at the screw level, make a cross mark there. Also make a cross mark where the arm plate connects to the side seam. Lastly, you're going to create cross marks at the shoulder dart, where the dart legs are, and where they connect to the shoulder. And you want that to be on both sides of that fold. These will be your dart legs. Now you can remove your muslin from the dress form for truing. Just for video purposes, all of my cross marks are now in marker, and I'm going to use marker to true the pattern. First, I'm extending the armhole out a quarter inch and down a half inch and squaring a short half inch line over. From the line that's a quarter inch over and a half inch down, I'm drawing a diagonal line from that point to the bottom of my side seam where it intersects with the waist. Now 
Now I'm marking a quarter inch down from the original neckline at center front. And then from that mark, I'm drawing over a line between a quarter and a half inch. Use your French curve to connect that new line at center front neck to where the shoulder and the neckline connect. Take your straight ruler and draw a line out to the end of the fabric from the screw level at the armhole. Measure between your dart legs at the waistline. Find whatever that measurement is, divide it by two, and then make a mark in the center, and that's going to be the center of your dart. Now on this next part, I made a slight mistake, but I'll go back and correct it. So you're supposed to draw a line from the dart leg that's closest to center front up to the apex, but instead I drew the middle line first and you'll see that I changed it. Here I'm drawing the line that goes from the dart leg closest to center front to the apex. On that line, come down one inch from the apex and make a mark. This is going to be your dart point. I'm going to pivot my ruler so that it touches the second dart leg and then extends to that one inch mark from the apex. I mark the new center line and then cross out the old one. Extend a line from your shoulder dart leg, the one that's closest to your center front, to your apex, and then again, the dart point is going to be one inch from the apex. Make a mark here. Again, that's your dart point. Then you're going to draw in another line from your other dart leg over to that one inch mark. You want to finger press the dart leg that's closest to center front, lay it on top of the other dart leg, and then pin it close. And this is going to help us true the shoulder. Use your clear ruler to draw a straight line from the shoulder tip at the armhole to where the shoulder connects to the neckline. Use your French curve to connect the point that's at the screw level to the underarm and then from the screw level up to the shoulder where it connects to the armhole. From the screw level at the armhole, add one half inch at the armhole 
one inch at the shoulder and then a half inch seam allowance at the neckline. You can cut off the excess fabric at the top of your muslin, at the neck, at the shoulder, and then half of the armhole, stopping right at the screw level. Pin the waist dart close, taking the dart leg that's closest to center front, finger pressing it, and pushing it over towards the other dart leg. Pin it up until that one inch mark away from the apex. Do the same for your shoulder dart, pinning down to your dart point. Pin your front bodice back onto the form to make sure it fits well, and then we'll go on to draping the bodice back.
When you're pinning the bodice front back onto the form, make sure that you leave about one inch from the side seam for you to pin so that it's easy for you to move the excess fabric towards the front while you're draping the back. Now we're on to draping the back. Just make sure that you have all of the proper lines on your muslin and that it's blocked and ready to go. First, we're gonna start by pinning from the neckline down to the shoulder blade level. Just make sure that the shoulder blade level on the muslin is lining up perfectly with the shoulder blade level or your HBL, horizontal balance line, on your dress form. The marking that you have on your muslin for the shoulder blade level plus ease should stop right at the ridge of your armhole. Because you're going to have some excess fabric, you want to smooth out the space between your guideline and your armhole ridge. Make sure that's smooth, but between your balance line and your center back, that's where you're going to have the excess fabric. So just distribute that evenly. And like we did for the front bust line, you want to have pins going up and down, alternating to secure the line to your dress form. Now you can pin at center back from your shoulder blade level down to the bottom of your waist tape.
Make sure your balance guideline is at a right angle with your shoulder blade level. Just like we did in the front, you want to have some extra ease. So you're going to pin down your guideline, but at the waist, the bottom of your waist tape, you want to pick up a small amount of fabric, about an eighth of an inch. Now you're going to balance your side seams for the front and the back together. You're going to line them up and maybe they don't actually match up, uh, which is fine. But you want to make sure that the distance between the fabric underneath the underarm and at the waist are the same. So I'm going to try to figure this out by pinning underneath the underarm and this is tight body so it's going to be close to the body and then also at the side seam where it connects to the waistline. As you can see when I turn the dress form around, the excess fabric in the front is not the same at the underarm level as it is at the waist level. So I'm going to measure it out to see what it is underneath the underarm. I have an excess of an inch and a quarter under the underarm. And then it's slightly more at the waist. So it's about an inch and five eighths. I'm going to mark at the waist the same distance of excess as underneath the underarm. And that's where I need the back to stop. In order to do that, I need to unpin the guideline and repin it. In order to have the side seam line up correctly, I need to move the guideline over towards the right. After I move it over, and make sure that it lines up. I also wanna continue to have that pinch at the waistline for ease. Now the excess is even from the underarm down to the waist. Now you can pin down the guideline.
just like we did in the front to give you some extra room in the hips you want to cut into the guideline but only up until about a quarter inch before you get to the bottom of the waist tape smooth from the guideline to the princess line and add a pin at the princess line and then you want to smooth from center back over to the princess line and also add a pin at the waist Let's smooth out the neckline by adding some clips and smoothing it over the shoulders, uh, making sure not to clip too far in, just enough so that the muslin lays flat across the shoulder and over the neck. Once the fabric is smooth around the neckline, you can clip off any extra fabric that you have at the neck, leaving about one inch. Pin the shoulder where it connects to the neckline. Between the neckline and the front shoulder dart, you want to pinch a small amount of fabric, about an eighth of an inch and then pin it down to the shoulder. Matching the shoulder dart that's at the front bodice, you wanna create a small dart in the back that's about a quarter inch on each side, half inch total. Between the shoulder dart and the armhole, you want to also pinch up about an eighth of an inch, extra ease for the shoulder. Pin at the shoulder tip. Now you're going to mark the shoulder tip. So that's the intersection between the armhole and the shoulder line. Do a cross mark at the back shoulder dart legs and also where the shoulder connects to the neckline.
Mark at the center back waist, at the bottom of the waist tape, over to the dart leg, make a cross mark on the other side of the dart leg, make another cross mark, and then mark again either with dashes or with dots over to the side seam. From the dash at your center back neckline, mark around the neckline in the back to the shoulder. Unpin the bodice back and front from the dress form, making sure to keep the front and back connected at the side seam with pins. Here I'm showing you that the front and back are still connected at the side seam. Here I have the front and back drape pieces laying flat on the table and I'm just repositioning the pins that I have in. Just being really careful not to shift the fabric. You're going to lay down tracing paper facing up and it's going to be on the back side of your draping piece and I'm going to transfer a few markings so I'm going to transfer the waistline just at the side seam. I'm going to transfer the side seam line and then I'm also going to transfer a small bit of the armhole about a half inch in. Just check to make sure that it transferred over correctly and that you can see the markings. My side seam measurement differed from the front to the back, so I'm just taking measurements to see which one would be the correct line. Uh, and it is the one that's coming from the front. I had a small bit of excess, probably a little over an eighth of an inch. From the side seam, draw a one inch seam allowance line. Pin 
Pin it down to eliminate shifting. Now cut off the excess fabric at the side seam. Unpin and separate the front from the back. Again, I'm just using the marker so that you can see it on the video. I'm just uh, kind of highlighting my cross marks. Please only use pencil. From the armhole ridge at the shoulder blade level, you want to extend the line down one inch. Take your French curve with the curve at the bottom, hitting the underarm, and going towards the one inch line, you want to create a curve for your armhole. Now flip your French curve to the opposite side and finish off your armhole by connecting the shoulder to the one inch line that you drew down from the shoulder blade level. Measure between the waist dart leg cross marks and find the center. Make a mark at the underarm level, but make sure it's directly above that center point that you just created between your dart legs. Draw a straight line up from your waistline up to that mark. Connect each dart leg cross mark to the dart point. Connect a dark leg cross mark at the shoulder closest to the center back to the dark point that you created for the waist dart. Measure down on this line three and a quarter inch. Connect your other dart leg cross mark to your new dart point.
Finger press and fold over the dart leg that's closest to center back at the shoulder to your other dart leg. And you want to pin that close until you get to the bottom of the dart point. Unlike truing your front bodice, you want your back bodice shoulder to be slightly curved. So you wanna use the end of your French curve ruler to create a curve to true your shoulder line. Here I'm drawing a line about a quarter inch from center back and then I'm creating my neckline by putting the French curve down onto that quarter inch line and joining it with where the shoulder intersects the neckline. Add one half inch seam allowance to the neckline and then one inch to the shoulder. Here you can cut off the excess fabric that you have at the neckline and shoulder. Finger press and fold over the dart leg that's closest to center back over to your other dart leg and close it until you get to the dart point. Now you want to true the back side seam. Fold 
fold over the back side seam and you want to overlap it with the front so that the side seams are meeting. Make sure that the underarms are joining in a straight line, even if it's only a half inch in from the front and a half inch in from the back. It needs to be a straight line so that it's continuous. Use your hip curve or a style curve to create the waistline. It may not hit every point that's on the waist, but it's okay, as long as it's hitting the majority of the points that are on the waistline at the front and at the back. Make sure that at the center front waist and the center back waist, they're at right angles with the actual center front and center back. at one inch seam allowance to the waistline. Cut off the excess fabric. Add one half inch seam allowance to the back armhole and then continue the half inch seam allowance to the front. Now you can cut off the excess fabric at the armhole.
fold the back shoulder so that it lines up at the armhole and also at the neck. Also remember that the shoulder darts should match up as well. There's going to be slight excess in the back shoulder because we pinched before the dart and after the dart. So you just want to make sure that you evenly distribute the excess fabric. Now it's time to try it on the form. Pin down center front and pin down center back, and you should have yourself a good fitting basic bodice sloper.